Hello, thanks for watching. So I wanted to cover the lawsuits that are happening right now in the state of Michigan when it comes to our executive orders and executive authority. For whatever reason, I can't seem to find good coverage of this in the media, just kind of some vague mentionings of it. So I thought I'd pull up the complaint and see if we couldn't uh, go through a few pages and see if together we can have a better understanding of what's happening. So there's two separate cases that are intersecting because they deal with the same issue. One is being fought in state court. It started at the Court of Claims. The second one is in federal court. And you might say, well, how is this federal case going to intersect with a state case? Never been considered by the Michigan Court of Appeals or the Michigan Supreme Court. This court, being the federal court, notified the parties that it was considering certifying two questions to the Michigan Supreme Court. That essentially means they're going to send two questions to the Michigan Supreme Court, uh, two questions on state law, and let the Supreme Court uh, weigh in with their answer. For the reasons to be explained, the court will certify the following questions to the Michigan Supreme Court. Whether, under the emergency powers of the Governor Act, which is MCL 10.31, we'll call that the 1945 law, um, or the Emergency Management Act, which is 30.401, whether the governor has the authority after April 30th, 2020, to issue or renew any executive orders related to the COVID-19 pandemic. And the second question, whether the emergency powers of the Governor Act and or the Emergency Management Act violates the separation of powers and or the non-delegation clauses of the Michigan Constitution. Okay, so the federal case is called Midwest Institute of Health PLC versus Gretchen Whitmer. And as you read through the complaint, it says um, that the projections on which the government leaders, including uh, Governor, Governor Whitner, made their decisions in March 2020 turned out to be grossly inaccurate. Um, the projections made by the CDC in early 2020 with the actual data. So um, the CDC projections were that 160 to 214 million people nationwide were going to be infected. But the actual numbers as of May 10th, 2020 turned out to be one point three million a lot shy of 160 million or 214 million at the low end and then the CDC projected that there would be between 200,000 and 1.7 million deaths and as of May 10th the official number was at 79,756 deaths so I'll just read a little bit here since early March 2020 Michigan Governor Gresham Whitmer has taken drastic unprecedented unilateral executive actions in an effort to address the spread of the virus that caused COVID-19 declaring a state of emergency in the state of Michigan and justifying her restrictions on rights and liberties based on very the very important goal to flatten the curve and avoid overwhelming Michigan's healthcare system and hospitals thankfully the goal of flattening the curve has been achieved and the dire predictions of overwhelmed hospitals have not come to pass during a press conference on Monday, April 27th, Governor Whitmer acknowledged that the curve has been flattened. Graphics depicted that while Governor Whitmer's administration anticipated 220,000 patients being hospitalized, there had only been 3,000 hospitalizations as of April 27th. That is less than 1.4% of the projected COVID-19 hospitalizations underlying the governor's declared states of emergency and disaster. So the Michigan legislature permitted Governor Whitmer to take extraordinary and immediate executive action during the first month of Michigan's response to the pandemic, and even granted a 23-day extension. But the Michigan legislature declined to extend Governor Whitmer's declaration of a state of emergency beyond April 30th, 2020. The legislature's decision to not extend the state of emergency constituted its determination that now that Michigan had its bearings about the nature of the pandemic, the legislature could resume its constitutionally mandated role of legislating based upon policy for what is no longer an emergency, but a long-term challenge. 
But instead of permitting the legislature to resume its ordinary policy setting and lawmaking role, Governor Whitmer simply redeclared exactly the same state of emergency that Michigan law required, and the legislature directed to be terminated. Under Governor Whitmer's interpretation of the relevant statutes, she may continue to redeclare a state of emergency serially for as long as she determines that the pandemic continues to constitute a quote unquote emergency. No one disputes that the exercise of executive power may be necessary in some time limited emergency situations. But the governor's sweeping assertion that she can rule by emergency powers potentially for years and without any regard for the legislature exceeds the scope of her statutory authority and violates a safeguard of the Michigan Constitution's separation of powers clause. This is an extraordinarily dangerous precedent to set. O4 declared a state of emergency pursuant to the emergency powers of the Governor Act and proclaimed a state of disaster and state of emergency under the Emergency Management Act. These declarations were based on the same circumstances, that is the dangers posed by the virus that causes COVID-19 that formed the basis of her original executive order. Governor Whitmer also requested that the Michigan legislature extend the state of emergency by an additional 70 days as contemplated by the Emergency Management Act. On April 7th, the Michigan Senate and Michigan House of Representatives denied Governor Whitmer's request to extend the state of emergency for an additional 70 days. Instead, the Michigan legislature extended the state of emergency declared by the governor for another 23 days, so until April 30th. And it goes on to say, as indicated, the Emergency Management Act requires the governor to declare that a state of emergency is terminated after 28 days if the legislature does not extend the emergency. And the Emergency Powers of the Governor Act states that any emergency declared under the statute terminates when the governor declares that the emergency is terminated. On April 30th, the Michigan legislature refused to extend Governor Wimmer's declarations of a state of emergency and state of disaster. Immediately after the Michigan legislature refused to extend her emergency declarations, Governor Whitmer issued on April 30th, 2020, three additional executive orders. Executive order number 686 terminates the governor's declaration of state of emergency and a state of disaster based upon the COVID-19 pandemic as required under the EMA. And here it is, the her uh, executive order says accordingly acting under the Michigan Constitution of 1963 and Michigan law I order the following the state of emergency declared under the Emergency Management Act and Executive Order 33 is terminated and the state of disaster declared under the Emergency Manager Act and Executive Order 33 is terminated given under my hand and the great seal of the state of Michigan minutes later Executive Order 68 was issued. Executive Order 68 purports to redeclare under the Emergency Management Act exactly the same states of disaster and emergency that the legislature refused to extend and which had just been terminated under Executive Order 66. These renewed states of disaster and emergency purported to remain in fact through May 28th. Executive Order 67 states that the state of emergency remains declared across Michigan under the emergency powers of the Governor Act, and that the state of emergency remains in effect until May 28th. The state of emergency that Executive Order 69 references is exactly the same state of emergency that the Governor declared to be terminated in Executive Order 66. It goes on to say, um, in Executive Orders 4 and 33, Governor Whitmer proclaimed states of emergency and disaster based on COVID-19 and stated that those proclamations would terminate when the emergency conditions no longer exist, quote, consistent with the legal authorities upon which this declaration is based and any limits on duration imposed by those authorities, end quote, including Section 3 of the Emergency Management Act, which limits the governor's authority to declare disasters or emergencies to 20 Days. To support an executive order, both the Emergency Management Act and the Emergency Powers of the Governor Act 
which is the 1945 law and the 1970 law. They require uh, the continuation of the previously proclaimed states of emergency or disaster. The Emergency Powers of the Governor Act provides that all orders and rules promulgated by the governor during the state of emergency, quote, shall cease to be in effect upon declaration by the governor that the emergency no longer exists, unquote. And if you want to look that up, it's MCL 10.31, subsection 2. The Emergency Management Act provides that a governor's declaration of emergency may last only 28 days, after which the governor shall issue an executive order or proclamation declaring the state of emergency terminated, unless a request by the governor for an extension of the state of emergency for a specific number of days is approved by resolution of both houses of the legislature. And that's an MCL 30.403 subsection 4. In issuing Executive Order 33, Governor Whitmer invoked only a single emergency, namely the COVID-19 pandemic, as grounds for exercising her powers under the EMA and the EPGA. The Michigan legislature did not approve Governor Whitmer's request for an extension of the declaration of emergency beyond April 30th, 2020. Accordingly, as a matter of law, the state emergency must be terminated. Governor Whitmer terminated the state of emergency and disaster declaration supporting Executive Order 77 on April 30th, 2020 by issuing Executive Order 66. The declaration terminated and ended any emergency declaration under the emergency powers of the Governor Act and all, quote, orders, rules, and regulations, unquote, promulgated by the governor based on that emergency, quote, cease to be in effect, unquote, and, quote, no longer exist, unquote. Any other interpretation of the emergency powers of the Governor Act would not only render the EMA entirely superfluous, but would also violate the separation of powers clause contained in the Michigan Constitution. And it goes on to say that after terminating the emergency underlying Executive Order 17 and 77, Governor Whitmer issued an additional two executive orders on April 30th. Those orders report to, quote, continue a statewide emergency and disaster, end quote, under the emergency powers of the Governor Act and Emergency Man Management Act and serve as the basis to support the governor's position that her executive orders predicated on the termination of state, predicated on the terminated state of emergency remain enforceable. So essentially, the governor issued an end to the emergency, and when she issued uh, that declaration saying that the emergency had ended, all of her authority to issue executive orders related to this pandemic went away with that declaration. There is no new emergency. The emergency upon which the governor's subsequent executive orders rely is exactly the same emergency that Executive Order 66 terminated. The governor's attempts to circumvent state law cannot be sanctioned because they not only violate the separation of powers clause in the Michigan Constitution, but would also render the statutory language requiring legislative permission for an extension of a proclaimed state of emergency beyond 28 days superfluous, is well settled, blah, blah. I think we already covered all that. So essentially it comes down to this, the governor cannot unilaterally extend the states of emergency or disaster in contravention of state laws that she relies on to justify her executive orders, including executive orders 17 and 77. Any contrary interpretation would violate basic principles of separation of powers. It would unlawfully permit the governor to declare as many emergencies as she wanted for as long as she wanted without any legislative checks on the governor's lawmaking by emergency executive order. So these are the claims made by the legislature against the governor. These claims were heard in the court of claims and the court of claims ruled in favor of the governor. Now this is going on 
to the Michigan Court of Appeals, and the Michigan Court of Appeals has been mandated to issue their opinion by August 21st. And then this issue is going before the Michigan Supreme Court, scheduled to hear oral arguments on September 2nd. How the court, the high court, is going to rule is anybody's guess. But here you can see the argument that was laid out by the Michigan legislature on why the governor lacks the authority to implement these executive orders after April 30th of 2020. Thanks for watching.